dive into The Boys, which just wrapped up season two last night. And yes, Amazon does this thing now where it's an episode from week to week. They don't just drop everything, assholes. Yeah. So uh, I will be the first, I will say this. I never finished season one last year. I couldn't quite get into it. And I went on to other things. So I finally binge watched all of it leading up to the last episode. And I am hooked. I want more. Um, and I got to give a shout out to Brendan, uh, a friend of ours, uh, James Chapman, uh, who's also an illustrator and working on my latest book cover. We were talking about this uh, last night. If the boys does one thing, it truly, truly makes everybody look terrible. <laughs> it's hard to tell who the, the bad guys are. And, you know, but anyway, there's a, but I love the fact that Carl Urban is the ultimate anti-hero in the boys. So somebody and, posted a great question on Facebook. It was, what if Deadpool met Billy Butcher? How would the conversation go? And I, and I said, well, Billy Butcher would say something like, well, 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 if it ain't the red suited cunt. And Deadpool would go, hey, Dr. McCoy got a potty mouth. <laughs> Good Lord. I can't wait. I just, if somebody if somebody hasn't done it yet, I will make a meme of him looking at you know his not son but the kid he's going to take care of, giving the best advice you can ever to a to a child: don't be a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> There's a meme going around of uh, they were doing like the cast was doing the press junket and somebody was like who who's most like their character on the show and everybody turns to the guy that plays. Um, Homelander, and everybody's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I got to say this about Anthony Starr. That's a, that's a very big departure considering his last series, uh, well, a couple series ago was Banshee on uh, Cinemax, which was really good. And you can actually check that out on Amazon. I believe it's on Prime. But he's basically a guy who went to prison and then changed his identity and becomes the sheriff of a town because that's the identity you take over. Uh, trying Last to place they're going to look for an ex-con. Yeah. Uh, he was great in that uh, series. That ran for four seasons. So I encourage people to watch uh, that plus three episodes. But getting back to the, uh, the boys, this is a show that I do find fantastic. Um, I didn't when it first started out, but after I had a chance to really binge watch and, kind of looking at all the characters, uh, you know. And, of course, of course, you have to have a big mega church in there that's like Scientology trying to control everything. So It's pretty outstanding, actually. Um, yeah. And the, the best, what I really love about this show is it's so over the top. Like, they're like, just when you think they've reached a line they haven't, they won't cross – yeah, they just jump straight <laughs> over it with a broom. Uh, and, you know, like, if you if you were queasy during Kill Bill with all the blood and the blood spurting in the Kill Bill movies, don't watch <laughs> yeah, this because you're just going to lose your lunch. <laughs> right. I mean, the scene, the scene, um, I don't know if you've seen this yet. I can't remember if it's in episode seven or up. You, oh, you you haven't seen it, Julie. I don't want to ruin it because you haven't seen yeah, it. I don't but, care. I'll forget. There's, I have there's a scene in it. There's a scene fish. where everybody's testifying before Congress. Right. And just their heads start exploding. <laughs> and like superheroes, good guys, bad guys, like everybody, like senators, congressmen, people in the audience, just their heads start exploding. There's this one, there's this one soup that can explode heads and you're not quite sure who it is until the very end. And that I'm not going to spoil, but and we're not going to spoil that. We won't yeah. spoil that, but it's, but, it's um, a good plot. So, but I mean, and people are trying to get out of this room and they're just slipping on all over the blood and they're, you know, they're just all traumatized and covered in blood. And it's just, and it's got like some kind of, I don't want to say, it's not quite like Guardians of the Galaxy 2 where, um, you know, they're, they're doing that happy, uh, it's got that really happy song while, um, I'm a little closer. Well, kill, yeah, they got kind of come a little closer going while they're killing everybody. Um, but it's kind of in a similar vein. And yeah, it's just 
it's crazy as hell. It's just so off the wall, but well, it actually fits in the universe. It's not just doing by the way, it for the sake of doing it. I love how the fact that they keep bringing up Billy Joel songs is like the ultimate metaphor, <laughs> little hidden metaphors around the show. Um, I think if you, again, getting back to the, you know, the queasy nature of this show, if I think uh, the character Huey kind of said it best at the, at the very last episode where he's trying to get a job with a congressman and she's like, you don't want to go with your team? No, I kind of want to do, I'm still going to try to bring down the evil corporation. I just don't want to do something that's so much blood and guts. <laughs> and the, but, okay. See, like when they, one, when they drove a speedboat through a whale. Oh my God. <laughs> and then they just end up inside the whale. <laughs> Because that's a thing. <laughs> and the Deep is just horrified because it's one of his buddies. Do you have a feeling that the, guy, that the guys who brought this to life or who, I don't know who created the comic. I don't know that much about it. Um, but do you feel like they just kept watching Kill Bill Part 1 and 2 over and over? And like, hmm, I think there's a... There's no, a I think they watched Super Friends intermixed with Kill Bill while taking high amounts, large quantities of hallucinogenics. You know what? That works. Sometimes that's how you get the best ideas. <laughs> By the way, it's Garth Ennis who also did Preacher. So, Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, that, that explains a lot. It does, yeah. Well, season two, um, I mean, if... I, I like how you deal with touchy subjects of like, you know, you obviously know that Homelander really isn't America's hero. He's, he's a douchebag. Okay. Also with a lot of insecurities. Um, it's a little creepy, his relationship with Elizabeth Shue. Um, but you know, you kind of forgive that because Elizabeth Shue still looks fantastic in her fifties. Um, it's a little bit more creepy when she kind of comes back in season two. Well, Completely spoiled that if you've seen the end of season one. Because that is, that is right proper creepy. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> you're looking at her in lingerie life. And, and you're going, wait, I, didn't she get her eyeballs burnt out in season one? Like, And then, you yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a manifestation of her. But you're just Things that make you go, lingerie, and like, okay, this is like that weird incest porn that's just over the top and Damn, Elizabeth, she still looks good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with the reveal of who it really is, though, man, talk oh, about know. things that make you go blah. I know, I know. <sighs> anyway, so, I, I'm going to need Elizabeth shoot in Cobra Kai season three um, <laughs> to make up for the creepiness. But, but again, you know that he's. You automatically know that anybody that's that patriotic and blah 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 and cares about you know, his marketing and how he looks and everything, he's not going to be a good guy. But here, here's where I kind of go off the rails with season two, and this is a bit of a spoiler. Why, again, do we always have to bring it back to world domination, remaking the races? Oh, and by the way, somebody was once a Nazi. <laughs> Why? I got through the last few episodes, and I'm just well, expecting them to say that's... Hail Hydra. Well, that's, I mean, but that's kind of a, um, a parallel to like what actually happened. Like, you know, I was joking around with the guys at Manhattan Project Brewing because they named their Oktoberfest Von Braun wow. after Werner Von Braun, who is the father of NASA and, oh yeah, the, developed the V2 rocket for the Nazis. Um, you know, so I was like, wow, that's, that's going out on a limb. That's a spicy choice. And, uh, but, you know, <laughs> they're... You know, so that's kind of, you know, okay, so basically this, what they're doing is tying it into real life that the soup factory or the soup uh, industry, the superhero industry in this series is, you know, it kind of happened the same way NASA did. You know, we took the, right. we took the scientists from uh, Nazi Germany. Right. But again, and, and, and I don't, you know, if you're looking for, you've heard it in pop culture before, but it is actually a real thing, Operation Paperclip. I mean, the X-Files talk about yeah. it a lot. And I get that. I'm not taking away from the fact that we took all the great scientists that were basically a part of the party and you know, were once Nazis and all them, and they helped reshape the world in the 20th century. But it literally boils down to a chick. Oh, yeah, I'm 100 years old. I married one of them. and But this is... 
this is a reason why we realize, you know, his science and, you know, the race, the other races are bringing us down. And I'm like, of course it's some Nazi chick that's trying to, and now I'm like, please put these. It, it was very gratifying watching her get her ass beat by Maeve Starlight and the, uh, the Chinese girl though, or Japanese yes, girl. Yes, I agree. Absolutely agree. But even I if she wasn't a Nazi, if, just because she's a bitch. Off German and, you know, how we're bringing the races down and we're going to remake everything and blah, blah, blah. Please bring in the show Hunters with Al Pacino to where they're hunting down former Nazis that are hiding in the U.S. I, I Like I said, it just, to me, it simplifies the story more and more that it's once a Nazi, we're remaking it, and then well, I think it's gonna get. I think it's gonna get real complicated again because she's in like six parts now. So, where did he go? Sorry, sorry, folks. My nose is running, and I didn't want to do it on camera. Fair enough. Oh, I, th I thought you fell out of your chair. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't fall out of my. <laughs> No, no, my uh, my evil lord uh, chair. Yes, this is the most MacGyver thing I've ever done. This is a gaming chair that was too low to the ground. So I bought a portable dolly, took apart a table, put the chair on top of the table, and then bought clamps so it would roll and be higher off the ground. But yes, one of these days I'm just going to dress up as uh, Dr. Evil and have a cat. <laughs> but yeah, I think... So I think it's going to get a whole lot more complicated again with the, um, I don't think it's just going to be about Nazis and, and, and it's just going to be a simple oh, no, black no, no. and white because, I, I, because I, they, they, they turned her into like six different pieces and um, you know, and with the Huey going to work for the Congressman and I think it's about to get a whole hell of a lot more convoluted. No. And you're right. I mean, you've opened up a whole can of worms to where obviously you can do more. Things. You didn't really get, the ultimate bad guy. And I think you're going to find that it isn't just, you know, Homelander or anything or his, you know, son. It's, there is an evil force behind everything. And that is manipulating all of these people behind the scenes. And, you know, to me, it's kind of leading into the way of, uh, you know, Marvel Captain America Civil War, where you're going to have to choose a side. And you're starting to see some of these heroes choose a side. Um, but what is it that's really behind everything? And you start and you kind of get that peak right at the very end of season two with who the new master villain is. And again, we're not going to spoil that. You're going to have to get through it and, and stuff. Julie. <laughs> yeah, I Julie. tried. Jeez. But I, but I will say this. Um, I love all the characters. I love the little mix up super fringe team um starlight is actually one of my favorite characters i mean it's creepy where she's super christian and they have the whole we are the world you know we defend america ridiculous song that keeps playing in the background but yeah she, yeah she grew on me as uh, especially like her and huey and their weird little relationship um but I got to tell you, I don't, I kind of look at Homelander as like a Negan-esque character where I don't know if he is strictly bad. He does horrible things, but I may, but maybe there is something more nefarious pulling the strings when it comes to him. And there is one thing that brings him back into the light. It, it is his son. And I think you're going to start to see that um, because obviously there's more, villains or soup terrorists out there um so overall i gave season two uh, a nine it was great fantastic highly recommend the boys um although a train a train's a dick i'm sorry that guy could go and i could care less but i really did like him as the third generation of the shaft family in the uh, latest shaft movie that came out last year I had a chance to see that on cable and that was actually really funny. So I, I, it's usually I'm a little, a slightly tougher grade than you. I gave it an eight, um, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, a train is a dick. I hope they keep the deep cause he's hilarious. 
um, for right. all the wrong reasons, but he's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> like he's a terrible person. <laughs> it's just right. awful. But but it's kind of like I'm laughing at him, not with him. Uh, so yeah. Um, but, also, uh, I I've got to see this Dawn of the Seven movie that they keep shooting because it just I mean it's so over the top and ridiculous. It's like please actually have that movie if nothing else for Mystery Science Theater three thousand. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh my god! But uh, I'm very glad for uh, Carl Urban getting a series that has actually lasted one season because he did that great series on Fox that got canceled after one season. Uh, oh yeah, two. yeah, that was and actually he, really good, and I was pissed that they canceled it. That's like yeah. Fox's mo, though. I know. I mean, you kind of give them uh, an ex- you allow them some excuses, like this past year with you know COVID and everything, but. Then again, this is Fox. We just hope they show everything in order. They get no, they get nothing from me. Not since Firefly. Pardon the interruption while you watch this fantastic video by that nerd show. But we wanted to remind you that when you're done, go to MyNerdSwag.com and check out all the cool swag that we sell to help support this great news outlet. Yeah, if you like uh, funny gaming or pop culture retro t-shirts, we have them. If you want a fantastic nerd bracelet to show your love as a nerd, we have that. We are also the home of the Baby Yoda t-shirt. That's right, we got a Baby Yoda t-shirt that you can buy and help support that nerd show. So when you're done, go to MyNerdSwag.com, check it out, help support the show, and keep the lights on. Every purchase helps.